Kappa is a famous amphibious yokai demon that lurks the rivers of Japanese mythology and folklore. They are mostly represented as green, human-like beings, with webbed hands and feet and a carapace on their back resembling a turtle's. They are known for their love of cucumbers and sumo wrestling. In Japanese stories, they lure people in the rivers to be drowned. But one wonders if the kappa is really evil, what does it offer to those it views as worthy of their knowledge? What does it all mean when it comes to the collective unconscious? Let's find out the answers to these and other questions in our new series of Japanese mythology. The yokai of Japanese myth and legends are beings of many forms. They're often associated with the borderlands, living on the edge of towns, in the mountains between villages, or in the eddies of a river running between two rice fields. According to folklore, you will often be able to see them at twilight, the time when the familiar becomes the strange and the faces become indistinguishable. Japan is made up of numerous islands and is full of rivers, marshes, creeks, swamps and ponds, which is a perfect place for our kappa to inhabit. Kappa is a slimy and greenish creature that often resembles a certain kind of monkey, giant frog or turtle. They are large as a child and quite clumsy on land, but at home in water. They thrive during the warm months. Kappa is believed to possess a great amount of strength which is accumulated by being in water. Moreover, a kappa has an indentation on top of its head that gets filled with water when they decide to leave the rivers. This indentation, also called a dish or sara, allows them not to lose all of their strength when on land. If a kappa's dish is damaged or the water is spilled, they become severely weakened and vulnerable. Before we continue, consider smashing the like and subscribe button if you want more content like this. Your support is highly appreciated and if you wish to donate, check out the description below. When it comes to etymology, the name Kappa is a blend of the words Kava, meaning river, and Vapa, meaning child. Another translation of the term Kappa is water sprites. The Kappa are also known to have at least 80 other names such as Kavako, Kavapa, Kogo and more. Its names Dangame meaning soft shelled turtle, Kavaso meaning utter and Enko meaning monkey reveal its outward resemblance to these animals. When it comes to mythology, the Kappa are the provocateurs of great power with menacing intentions towards humans. Kappa resembles the trickster archetype, being a psychic embodiment of the spontaneous and creative ability that alters the established systems which we get so used to. Their mischief can range from minor things as looking up women's kimonos to the major ones as kidnapping children, victimizing animals, raping women, drowning people and eating their flesh. It is believed that the Kappa often assault humans in water with the intentions of drinking their blood, eating their liver or removing a mythical organ called the Shirikodama from the victim's bubbles. This Shirikodama is believed to be an elixir field, which is located beneath the navel representing a focal energy point in yogic breathing and meditative traditions. In order for the kappa to steal the liver of a victim, it needs to suck out or remove the shirikodama, which results in death for its owner. Japanese scholars have argued that kappa offers the shirikodama and or liver as a tribute to a snake-shaped dragon deity who is believed to be the lord of waters. If we take a step back and look at this from a psychological perspective, the water is the unconscious and in it always lurks the kappa, a demon that can suck out our shirikodama, which is in some way a piece of materialized psychic energy as an offering to the great water dragon, an offering to the great mother archetype for those not careful enough in their exploration of the unconscious. In some way, kappa shares some of its features with its feminine counterpart, Rusalki, which can be found in Slavic mythology. 
For more information, check out the video that will appear in the top right corner. As the Kappa enjoy participating in sumo wrestling, many that are passing through their domain will be invited to a challenge. But how could one defeat the Kappa when we know that its strength and power is far beyond any mortal? Well, one of the ways was to simply bow before the fight. As the Kappa were obsessed with politeness, they would bow in return and spill the water from its dish. This would weaken them and they couldn't move from the bowing position until the water was refilled. If a person refilled the bubble, the Kappa would serve him for eternity. It was believed that another weakness of the Kappa were its hands. You could easily pull them out from their body and the Kappa would share knowledge or give a favor for its return. A legend from Ehime Prefecture tells us more about the Kappa. Long ago, the maid of a doctor's household went out to the outhouse at night and out of the toilet reached a hairy hand, perhaps a human, perhaps a monkey. She didn't know what and made to stroke her buttocks. She was frightened and told her experience to the doctor. On hearing this, the doctor grabbed the sword, exclaimed, I'll go conquer this thing and entered the outhouse. And sure enough, when a hand reached out of the toilet, the doctor grabbed it and chopped it off with his sword. He brought the hand inside and put it in his examination room. The next evening, there was a knock at the front door. Assuming it was a patient, the doctor went out and discovered that it was the Enko whose arm he had chopped off the day before. Doctor, the Enko said, please return my arm. If I don't apply medicine and reattach it quickly, I won't be able to reattach it at all. I won't do anything bad anymore, it apologized. So please return my arm. When the doctor at first refused, the Enko signed a pledge, promising to teach him secret knowledge and how to make a medicine for mending bones. And so it seems the doctor then returned his arm. After this, it is said, the doctor prospered as a specialist in the setting of bones. Another story tells us a horse-stealing kappa that was captured and made to sworn to never harm people again. In some versions, a kappa would be dragged by horse to the stable and forced to promise not to misbehave. Another way to repel the kappa is to use iron, sesame or ginger, as it was known that they had a peculiar aversion to these objects. There is an interesting story of a Japanese farmer who promised his daughter's hand to a kappa in return for his field irrigation. The farmer's daughter challenged the kappa to submerge several gourds in water. As the kappa spilled most of its liquid from the bowl, it retreated in shame. Despite their menacing characteristics, they possess a playful side filled with honesty. It is not uncommon that a kappa befriends a human or other yokai. Once befriended, a kappa will perform many favors for human beings, such as teaching the medical skills, irrigating fields and bringing fresh fish, which was a sign of good fortune for those that receive it. It was believed that wise men had the best chances of befriending the kappa. There were various festivals held in Kappa's honor in order to obtain a good harvest. Some of the festivals are even held today. As the cucumber was the favorite meal of the Kappa, it was offered in festivals where people would write the names of their family members on cucumbers and send them afloat into the streams to appease the Kappa. Moreover, it was believed that the Kappa travel on cucumbers buzzing through the air like dragonflies on a summer's day. Agricultural communities that depended on water irrigation celebrate the kappa as water deities, also known as suijin. When treated with respect, the kappa would ensure water for irrigation or, on the contrary, cause droughts or flooding. As we see, the kappa can be considered simultaneously a deity and a demon, depending on the perspective of the human with whom it is in contact with. And on that note, let's conclude the video with a quote from Leonardo da Vinci about the nature of water, which reflects the nature of our kappa in a certain way. Water is sometimes sharp and sometimes strong. 
sometimes acid and sometimes bitter, sometimes sweet and sometimes thick or thin. Sometimes it is seen bringing hurt or pestilence, sometimes health giving, sometimes poisonous. It suffers change into as many natures as are the different places through which it passes. And as the mirror changes with the color of its subject, so it alters with the nature of the place, becoming noisome, laxative, astringent, sulfurous, salty, incarnated, mournful, raging, angry, red, yellow, green, black, blue, greasy, fat or slim. Sometimes it starts a conflagration, sometimes it extinguishes one, is warm and is cold, carries away or sets down, hollows out or builds up, tears or establishes, fills or empties, raises itself or burrows down, speeds or is still, is the cause at times of life or death, or increase of privation, nourishes at times and at other does the contrary, at times has a tank, at times is without savor, sometimes submerging the valleys with great floods, in time and with water everything changes. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for rebuilding Olympus.